when Igor Sikorsky first flew his helicopter in 1910, he dreamed that it would be used as an everyday mode of transportation. He dreamed that it would be used for simple trips. And there's footage of him flying his helicopter, going to deliver groceries to his wife. Fast forward 50 years, and in the 1950s and 60s, during the space race, we were all sure that by the year 2000, we would all be making regular trips to the moon. Fast forward another 50 years, and unfortunately, very little has happened to make Sikorsky's dream a reality, mainly because people assumed that to develop a convenient personal flying machine would be too expensive or simply too difficult of a problem to solve. That being said, I've always shared Sikorsky's dream of a personal flying machine. I, too, had assumptions that building an, aer an airplane or a helicopter would be very expensive, require a lot of technical expertise that would be very hard to find and let alone hire. And the dream of flight was going to remain just that, a dream. Last year, I found myself with a lot of time on my hands to think. And I started asking myself, whatever happened to that dream? And what could I do to make it a reality? I had a lot of questions, <laughs> a lot of questions. What if you could take off and land vertically from your driveway? What if? The aircraft was so easy to fly that you only needed a couple of hours of training. What if the aircraft was so safe to fly that you'd forget that you were even flying? What if we could produce them cheaply so they're the same price as a car? What if a small company could produce a convenient vertical takeoff and landing flying machine as opposed to waiting for GM or Boeing to develop it? What if I could build it? I became very curious and fixated on what that flying machine would look like. Of course, I had more questions that I could answer on my own. So I started looking for my team, started with, starting with aerospace engineers. They were super excited about the idea, and we started seriously exploring whether we could make this seemingly crazy idea come to life. We just had a few minor challenges. <laughs> we knew that we had to make it mechanically simple if we were going to keep the cost down. That meant no tail rotor and no cyclic pitch control. This is a traditional control system of helicopters. We also knew that we had to make it as safe as possible. That meant no exposed moving parts and multiple power systems. So even in the worst case scenario, it doesn't fall out of the sky. <laughs> we also knew that it had to carry 260 pounds up to 10,000 feet. As it turns out, it was possible. When I saw the first 3D concept, it was super ugly. <laughs> but to me, it was the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen. I was so happy, so excited, that I couldn't continue working that day. Here it is. Other members of the engineering team started coming together. And up until this point, all that I had needed from my team were just some calculations and some design drawings. But now I needed to figure out how to build this thing. So I needed an aerospace certified composites expert. Those guys are everywhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea where to start looking. So I put an ad on Kijiji. And surprisingly, I got a reply <laughs> <laughs> from an aerospace certified composites technician who builds helicopters at Pearson Airport here in Toronto. Imagine that. And a person from another ad connected me with a hobbyist aircraft builder in Montreal who happened to have two brand new aircraft engines from a discontinued project. I immediately called up my friend Alex and told him, we're going to Montreal to pick up these engines. Not your typical road trip, I know. <laughs> Here's a picture of us loading two Hearth F-33 aircraft engines in the back of my car. <laughs> to date, there have been some attempts at making personal flying machines. Some of you might have seen the Jetman flying around the tallest building in Dubai, or the Jetpack 
or even the flying car. But unfortunately, they don't solve the problem that would make them convenient for everyday use. They either cannot be launched from the ground or still require a runway to take off and land. In case of the jetpack, can only fly for 30 minutes and has one engine. We've taken into account all these shortcomings when designing our personal flying machine. It can take off and land vertically, so that eliminates the need for a runway. It's only six feet wide, so it will fit in your garage. It has two running engines, so even in the worst case scenario, one engine is powerful enough to carry you down to the ground safely. It also has a parachute, so if you're above a certain height and you do have an engine failure, the parachute will deploy, carrying you down to the ground safely. And unlike traditional helicopters that have many more moving parts that are very complex and require a lot of ins periodic inspection and replacement, our helicopter is mechanically simple. And above all, it weighs less than 254 pounds, which classifies it as an ultralight. That means less licensing is required. So here's where we're at. We finished our design drawings and calculations, and we started making the parts. And just to let you know, everything has to be made from scratch, except the engines. Here's our rotor molds, our duct molds, our engines, and our first gear blanks. And this is the latest version of the design. And we're scheduled for a prototype test flight mid-2016. From there, we will work with Transport Canada, the Canadian FAA, to put it through a complete and thorough testing procedure. Our plan is to start testing and selling unmanned drones until we feel comfortable putting a person in it. But we're very close. And just to let you know, everything from concept to construction has happened in the last nine months. <laughs> Thank you. Imagine what can happen. Imagine an automated sightseeing flight over the Grand Canyon without needing to know how to fly. Imagine rescuing people out of disaster areas quickly, safely, and cheaply. Imagine if people started commuting in their own personal flying machines. What would that mean for our city infrastructure? What would that mean for our highways and transit systems that are straining under pressure today? Imagine what that would mean for our time. What other problems could we finally focus on? It's all possible. We just need to rethink what is possible when it comes to personal aviation. Thank you. <laughs>